Hi and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Yebe. In this one, we're going to do a little bit of development. We're going to sort all of my digital photos. But before we get started, please hover over the little red watermark in the bottom right of the video and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos. And at the end of the video, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. But let's get to it. So on my desktop here, I have a folder called Photos. And in that, I have another folder called Unsorted. And inside of that, I have a bunch of photos. Now, in reality, I have about 30,000 photos that I want to sort, but we'll just start with a small sample. And these photos, are, you know, they're named with whatever is on them. There's a golf course, there's a flower, there's a man fishing. But I can't see when the photo was taken, what year, what month. Uh, so I'd like to change that. And I'd like to organize my photos in folders so that in the sorted folder here, I will have a folder called, for example, uh, 2012. And inside of that, I would have folders called 01, 02, and so forth for each month of the year. That'll make it a lot easier for me when I want to go through the photos and see which ones are good and bad. And also when I want to order, for example, a photo book online, I'll have an easier time putting them in the right order. So what we want to do is we want to look at each individual photo and extract some of the data that is contained within the file. And if I right click this file um, and click properties, and if we go to the details tab here, we can see that this was taken on December 24th, Christmas Eve of 2013. So we would like to put this in a folder called 2013 and then a subfolder called 12. And we'll have the automation do that. So let's get started with some development. So we'll start up Studio and I have a blank project here. And the first thing we want to do is we want to select the folder that we want to get the pictures from. So I'll find the select folder activity and drag it in. And we will rename this select source folder. And this will just let the user select whatever folder he wants. And then whatever the user selects, we'll store in a new variable. And we'll create that by pressing Control K. And we'll just call that source folder. So now we have a new variable called source folder, and that's just a string. The next thing we want to select is the folder that the pictures should be copied to. So we'll drag in another select folder activity. And this one we'll call select destination folder. And we'll store that in a new variable called destination folder. So pretty straightforward so far. And then we're going to create a new variable, and that's going to be an array of strings. And I'll create that in this sequence that I should rename to rename photos. So we'll go back here into the variables pane and create a new variable called all photos. And that will be an array of strings. Just like that. So now we are going to, first of all, hide this panel and then use an assign activity. And we're going to assign to the all photos variable the result of an expression. And we will just click the asterisk over here so we can uh, zoom in a little bit. And then inside of this expression editor, we're going to write an expression that will return the file names of all of the files inside of the source directory. So that's just going to be a little bit of .NET code. It's not very complicated, and I'll explain it once I've written it out. All right, just like that. Um, what this does is it gets the files, of course, from the source folder. It gets all files that has the extension JPG. And then I have this search option given as an argument as well. And that simply defines that I also want to search in the subdirectories of that folder. So I'll click OK. And the next thing we want to do is we want to iterate through all of these file names. And we'll do that by using a for each activity. So for each file in the all photos array of file names, we want to do something. And what we want to do is we're going to extract this metadata from each of the files. And to do that, we're going to use an invoke code activity because I found some code online I'm not going to explain it in, in great detail, but we'll run through it very quickly. But we want to use the invoke code activity. And I've made a video about the invoke code activity. You'll find a link to that in the description below. But into this code, we're going to paste the code that I found online. And we'll just paste it in, and I'll go through it in just a second. And click OK. And then we'll create the arguments that this code needs in order to run. And the first argument is going to be called file. And let me just move this down a little bit. Because file in this column 
is the name by which the argument is referred to inside of the code, then in the value field we'll also type file, but that is the name of the object that we're currently processing. So maybe a little confusing, but that's how it is. Also, we'll create an argument called taken date, and that is an outgoing argument. And that will give us back the date and time of the taking of the picture. And that is of type system date time. And we will assign the result of this uh, argument to a new variable called picture take, picture date, sorry. So let's just look at the code very quickly. And what it does is it creates a new image object from the file name that we send in through the file argument. And there's a properties collection inside of the file with exif uh, metadata about pictures. And we're getting property number 306, which is the date and time of the picture being taken. And then it's going to manipulate all of that, resulting in a date time uh, that we are returning down here in the last line as a date time variable. So I know that's just a very quick look, but that's not the central part of this. Uh, let's just click OK and get on with it. Then the next thing we want to do is we want to create a new file name for the new file. Because as you remember, we want to also rename the file to indicate when the picture was taken. So we'll drag in an assign activity down here. And we'll create a new uh, variable called new file name. And to that, we'll assign the result of an expression. And again, I'll call up the expression editor here. And I'm just going to paste in some code or an expression that I wrote, and then I'll explain it. So in the picture date variable, that's where we have the value that we got back from the first code invoke activity. We will format that to a string using this format. Year, 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 dash, month, month, dash, day, day, plus an underscore, and then plus the hours, minutes, and seconds of that picture being taken, and then add also the extension being JPG in this case. And then we click OK, and that should give us a new file name to store the picture by. Then we're going to check if a folder exists. So we're going to use the path exists activity for that. First, we're going to select that we're looking to check a folder if that exists. And into that, we're going to paste also an expression. And the expression, I'll just pull up in the editor again. We're checking this path. And this is the destination folder that the user selected to begin with, plus the year of the picture date variable converted to a string padded with up to four zeros. Now, I don't think we're going to switch to the year uh, 10,000 anytime soon, but uh, this is just a habit. And then also we're going to add a backslash and then a new folder name, which is the month of the picture date, also padded with up to two zeros. So uh, the month of May will be 05, for example. So it's going to check if this folder exists. We'll click OK. And we're going to store the result of that evaluation into a variable that we'll create. And that will be called folder exists like that. So now we're checking if the folder that this picture would be stored in, if that folder exists. If it doesn't exist, well, then we'll want to create it. So we'll drag in an if activity. And we have this variable that we just created called folder exists, right? If that is false, then we want to create a new folder. So we will just find the create folder activity, drag it over here. And that same path that we checked for up in this path exists activity, we'll want to create that now. So we'll just paste that in. And that will then create the folder if it doesn't exist. Now in the new 21.4 version of Studio and all of the activities and stuff like that, there's an option that you can hide the else part of an if statement if it isn't used. So if we sort of reverse this to being not folder exists, that means that this evaluates to the opposite. And then we want to move this over to the then section. And now you can see that it actually automatically hid the else section. We can show it, we can hide it. But if it isn't in use, then it will be hidden automatically. And this is just a little bit cleaner. You still have to get your head around this sort of reverse uh, Boolean logic. But I like to keep it clean, so that's how I do it. And then as the final activity, we want to copy the file that we are evaluating to the new folder. So we drag that in, and we want to copy from the file. And then in the to field here, or the to property, I'm going to paste in an expression, and we'll go over that in a second. Before we do that, I make sure that the overwrite uh, flag is set, so that it will overwrite in case any files are repeated. And then we'll just go into the to uh, property here and see what is going on here. What we do here is we, we copy the file to the destination folder, 
add it to that the year, add it to that the month, and then add it to that the new file name that we generated earlier. Right? So if I'm not mistaken, this should actually do the job. So we'll just go through it one more time very quickly. We select or prompt the user to select the source folder. We prompt the user to select the destination folder. We get all of the JPEG files in that folder and assign them to this variable called all photos. And for each file in that array, we go through it, extract the metadata using this little bit of .NET code that I found using Google, assign a new file name, check if the path exists that the file should be copied to. If it doesn't exist, then we'll create the folder. And then finally, we'll copy the file to that folder. We could also, you know, delete the, the original file and all of that. We're not going to do that right now. I'm a little sensitive about deleting family photos. I have gotten burned once too many times doing that. So let's, uh, let's minimize this or at least resize it. And then we'll go to the sorted folder here. And we can see that there's only the one that I created manually at the start of the video. I'll delete that. And now we will run our automation. And we'll see how it goes. And it's going to ask me to select the source folder. That will be the unsorted folder. The destination folder will be the sorted folder. And as soon as I click OK here, we should see some folders starting to be created up here. And there we go. We can see the folders being created. And now the automation has finished running. And if I remember correctly, we were looking at a picture from December of 2013 and we can see that there are a few pictures here and the one that we looked at to begin with was uh, from December 24th and we can see that this was taken 50 seconds after 522 in the afternoon of December 12th 2013. So now all of my photos, all 12 of them, are sorted into these folders and once I start this robot on all of my photos there's going to be a lot of folders with a lot of pictures and it's going to be running for quite a few hours. But this is something you can use automation for as well. You know, little hobby projects at home. And, you know, I think, I think at least my wife would be happy when she sees that I've done this. So happy wife equals happy life. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up if you like the video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.